I guess, Joe, to start with, um, when you're sort of locking down this type of squad, um, is it sort of a harder one to narrow it down than your first one, given how many sort of players you sort of have figured out or have now sort of merged the radar the past sort of month or so? Um, it's always tough to, to actually narrow down a squad. I think there's some guys who missed out who've, who've worked really hard and have massive promise, but um, yeah, we just thought for this particular assignment for these two weeks, uh, we know what's coming and, and we want to try to try to match what's coming and also um, continue to express ourselves and, and build on our game. I guess the big sort of conclusion is Mariko, can you from your perspective talk about when the conversation started, when you sort of, sort of had that indication that A, he was you know, still keen to play for Wallabies after those retirement rooms and B, that he would come in for this series? Uh, Marika's been keen all year, um, and so you know that, that it's not a sudden conversation. Uh, there's been uh, there's been a few conversations, and and uh, we just kind of felt that his experience would be useful against against these guys. Um, but at the same time, part of Marika's job in the in the group is is to share that experience with with our guys, um, some of the younger guys. We've obviously got. A younger set of back three players in this week with Corey Tall joining us and and um, uh, Max Jorgensen and, and even some inexperience uh, outside of those those new guys in. So it's a it's a good opportunity for him to share that experience. He's a he's de- he's a very likable character um, and a, a very easygoing character uh, unless you're marking him, I think. Absolutely. And just on sort of that experience, you know, only bring Rika in, can you just sort of go through that sort of process of weighing up whether to bring in further guys and is that something you might look to do for those further overseas players to be exact just sort of down the line in terms of that experience and youth balance? Yeah, I, th- I think we, we've been pretty um, pretty open about favouring the, the locally the locally based players, and we'll continue to do that. But it doesn't mean that I, I haven't had conversations with overseas players, and, and they and they continue. And um, if we think it's the best thing to keep growing the the, the players that we've got, because the, some of those overseas players have got really good experience, and obviously. They're also really pl- proud uh, Wallaby players and, and are keen to be involved still. So that, that may happen in the future. I, I think I, I'd be re- relatively short-term focused in a, in a, a match week like this one. Um, we, were, we have who we have and, and they're, they're front and centre. Just still on that selection piece, Joe, um, can you talk to us a little bit about Will Skelton, um, where he figured in your... Reckoning, obviously a, a guy with, you know, speak of experience, captain the Wallabies last year, big man um, as well. Um, is he a, a chance to come back to the rugby championship or what's the what's the picture that... Yeah, we've, we've had a few discussions, Will and I, and, and um, he, he's a great um, fellow to talk to and uh, he, even about the... He obviously watched our games uh, during July very closely, and, and we had a chat about those games, and 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 we have chatted about him potentially being involved later in the championship. So um, it is it, it's all quite open ended at the moment, and um, and they've been really supportive, um, supportive of the the young guys that we've brought in uh, locally based, and uh, and also willing to step in um, should we feel that that's the best decision for the team. Was it um, with well, was it a consideration around you wanting to back the young guys, or was there a, was there anything at his end? <clears throat> pardon me, as far as fatigue and, and you know his preparations and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, the last time I spoke to him, he was on holiday with his family, so um, yeah, you know, it's a difficult time to suddenly start thinking about um, joining a joining a team. Um, there's also the complications of getting him back from France and then getting back up to France because. Uh, this window is complicated. It's, it's, it's not a, a normal test window in the Northern Hemisphere, so it just becomes a little bit complicated from that perspective. Um, and it, 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 as good a player as Will is with the experience he has, if he arrives here and he's fatigued and he goes back there and he's fatigued and, and we're trying to get him backwards and forwards, it, it's not necessarily going to add the, the amount of value we'd like it to add. So, um, you know, it may... It may be later in the in the TRC that he that he comes in, or, or it, he may even come in when we when we head north and for the spring tour. Hey Joe, what's the 
big pass mark for the rugby championship and, and even these two test matches against South Africa. Yeah, I, I don't do pass marks, to be fair. Um, you know, the, I certainly share some some things internally, but, um, you know, to, to put things into a number um, or to put it into a, a, a letter or grade, I, I, I think we're better off to focus on the process and just keep trying to build the process because in the end, um, I, I know other people will give us marks whether we pass or, or don't pass, so I'll, I'll leave that to them. Um, South Africa, the whole idea of a bomb squad. Uh, what do you thought? Like, what are your philosophies of it around? Like, you were on World Rugby previously. What are your philosophies around the idea of a bomb squad and whether or not fatigue should be in the game? And you know, it's it's great innovation having a seven-one side off the bench at times, but it, it's not necessarily great for the little people and it, you know the stop-start nature of it. Would you subscribe to that, or do you think even like reducing the number of reserves is a, is a good thing to try to bring fatigue into the game? Yeah, I think if you ask the players, they feel pretty fatigued at times. I think there is still fatigue in, to in, in the game, and if a, if a bomb squad member comes on at half time, they've still got to play 40 minutes. Um, I think one of the challenges is, is to keep players moving from set piece to set piece and, and you know with the new law trials 30 seconds to set a scrum 30 seconds to, to have that line out underway 60 seconds not 90 seconds for a for a, a, a conversion now I, I think some of those times are being contracted a little bit and, and maybe that'll impact on um, the size of, of player um, and, and there are risks you know talking to Vern Cotter, who, who's obviously a good mate of mine around the, the Blues this year, they went with a 6-2 split, got two injuries very early on in their back line and, and played, um, played a half-back on the wing for the, whole, for the whole of the second half, well, even more than the second half. So you can get stung by it, um, you know, and so any innovation is great until it's not, I guess. Um, Max Jorgensen, uh, there was a bit of discussion that he might be playing for Randwick, but he's joined you guys and... Clearly, he's, he's fit enough to be in that squad. Did you think about having him be eased back for our club rugby? Because obviously, he's been breaking down pretty regularly at a young age. Yeah, I mean, we've had a, a long-term plan with Max, and, and uh, Max is really well across it. Um, I, I, I had a few discussions with Stephen Hoyles uh, at, at Randwick, and it, probably the original plan was, was to bring him back through club rugby with Randwick, but um, Max is, is going really well. Um, he was the quickest guy we had at training today um, uh, across the ground, and so, you know, he, he, he's, definitely, he's definitely fully fit. Um, so I, I think if someone's fully fit, whether he maybe plays or, or, or trains for club, I, I think he'll get more volume of training training with the, the Wallabies in a full-time program. And, and on top of that, every team has their own lexicon, um, you know, their own, their own language and their own expectation. And um, I think it's just easier to meld him um, more quickly into the, into the Wallaby setup with him being present. But do you think there's any risk of confidence, like uh, issues with him, given the, the setbacks that he's had? Or or, or do, you, do you still think that the 19-year-old that you know blew our minds last year is both mentally but also good enough to just go straight on to the international circuit if caught upon? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a conundrum um, because you never know. You, you know, you, you talk to players, I had a good chat to Max today, um, and uh, he, he seems confident. He, he is very keen, super keen. So... You know that that keenness and confidence hopefully will be evident in the way he plays. But um, you know it, it, it is a big um, it's a big test match for him to to inject himself into. If I could just ask that last one, um, the sevens, two new faces there with Luke Reimer and, and Charlie um, and uh, Tizano, um, both kind of on ballers, uh, like to get on the ball. Do you think having someone like them to start a match will be as more effective or to come off the bench? Luke's probably been more effective as a super sub for the Brumbies. 
Yeah, that's that's the way they've used him. Um, Luke came in and trained with us uh, in the week in the Georgian week, so he, he's he's familiar. Um, and Carlo was was in the hub when when we uh, when we had the hub trainings prior to the July series, so they're both pretty familiar to us. Um, Carlo had a massive volume during Super Rugby uh, and and did a super did a super job uh, for the force. So. Uh, we're not quite sure where they fit yet. That's, you know, um, I guess a decision we'll make um, having a look at, at today's training and, and again having a look at Tuesday's training. I'll just ask a two parter to finish, Joe. Is Angus Bell um, right for selection? And second one, while I've got you, is um, just your overall thoughts of South Africa in, in July against the Irish, um, you know, and their game where they're at? Yeah, I, I think um, you know Angus didn't quite hit the speeds that Max Jorgensen did today, but um, he, he he looked big and robust carrying the ball, and uh, and he trained fully. So um, you know, I, I think it's it is a little bit to see how he comes through the week uh, before before considering him. But um, he, he, he's done everything we've asked of him so far, so that, that's that's a big tick in in that column. Um, not so big a tip, tick in the other column with uh, South Africa. They look pretty impressive. Um, the level, intensity uh, of that Irish series with South Africa was was entertaining. I think um, I think most people would have been entertained by the by the one score results and, and particularly Kieran Frawley nailing those those two late drop goals to win the second test. Um, bit of controversy with with James Lowe's try being disallowed. Not the first time uh, for South Africa. They tend to get a bit of luck from that perspective. So, um, you know, they don't, they don't need too much luck to fall their way. Though they make a lot of their own luck with the um, with the quality of player and the and the the connectedness that they have. They have guys who played a a lot of Test match footy together, and um, you know that 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 breeds a confidence and a an almost unspoken trust amongst players that they know what each other. Uh, are going to do, and, and they they have a an expectation of um, them doing it well. And uh, I think based on the way South Africa have played, they've they've done things well. Yeah, how's back to the room, South Africa so different without Jacques? I'll bring it back to the room. Sorry, after, no, you're, I'll bring it back to the room I, after this one, mate. I, I was just going to ask, how's South Africa different without Jacques Neem uh, and, and returning to Razi as head coach? Um, yeah, I'm not sure there's too much difference. You know, Jacques and, and Razi, um, I worked with Jacques and Razi, um, you know, when they were at Munster and I was with Ireland, so uh, I'd know them both well. And, and, um, and they're, they're, they're very tight, so um, Jacques and Razi would have worked closely together. And with Razi continuing, I, I think there would, there would be the, the same emphasis and in the manner in which they do things. I think um, they're, they're certainly defending in a very similar way. And so, um, yeah, I, I think uh, it, it will be more of the same. Um, and and they, they, they really try to put massive pressure on whether, what, whether they have the ball or, or whether, whether they don't. Anything in there? No, Sarah comes in. Um, what do you like about him? Yeah, we really liked Ciro, uh early in the season. We thought he was going really well and he had that thumb issue and he came back and he only got the tail end of the season and we just didn't feel that he'd hit the same level. Um, and even talking to Ciro, he, he, he felt he was a little bit off, but he's had that chance to have a couple of games with the Reds um, against Wales and Tonga and, and looked you know, somewhere near where he needed to be. Obviously with Liam Wright and, and Fraser McWright both coming out, there was a little bit of space for for Siri to come in and and uh, potentially be in a bit of an all-purpose um, player for us. Daytime, uh, match at Suncorp Stadium. Um, could be uh, you know, pretty quick track, um, I guess at the best time, particularly during the day. Like, are you expecting you know, plenty of points or are you, I guess, expecting that to have an impact on the sort of game that we see? Um, well, I, I think it's just going to be a great occasion. Um, they're very close to selling Sunco way up, um, so there's going to be a real atmosphere. And I think um, daytime, I, I personally love daytime footy. Um, I think players love daytime footy as well, so uh, 
you know, I think both teams will really look forward to it. The South Africans are, are very cl uh, used to playing uh, during the day. I think our, our guys less so, but they mix it up. They get some ga um, day games in Super Rugby and, and the occasional day test. You know, it was nice to play Georgia a bit earlier in the day than we did the two Welsh ones. So, um, you know, the weather's been very good uh, for the last two days, and I, I think it's it's supposed to last. And um, yeah, it's a pretty good place in the world to be, yeah, in the middle of what's called winter, most places. And coming up against um, Springboks throughout the, since you've taken charge, uh, would you like to have had a bit longer before you really test yourself against the best in the world at the moment, or is it, are you happy to be where you are? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'd like to have more time, you know, to be honest. Um, you know, I think I've got to be candid. It, it's it's a very much been a sprint so far. Um, you know, we had a three match weeks. Uh, we had a brief camp here before those, and and then we've had a, a small hiatus, and and we're back underway. So, um, you know, six new players in that that I haven't spent time with before, and um, connecting it all up is is a real challenge. They've got a, as I said, a, a massive experience in their spine. But some really exciting young players like Fussy, who, who who's a looks like a heck of an athlete. Um, but I, I've coached against most of them over a, a number of years, really, with Ireland and and, and New Zealand. And so, um, yeah, you know, I I probably know them better than I know us. But um, you know, we've got a great bunch of young men who who are really committed to to trying to make sure that they are as competitive as possible on set uh, on Saturday. Thanks guys, appreciate your time. Uh, I'll be on the